Matt Crump here again with uh, another meaningful moment. I would hope it's a meaningful moment for you and definitely uh, will be for me this whole week as I've had a chance to uh, share with many of you about um, the bottom floor. We talked about the bottom floor all week long and a lot of times people will be so consumed with the climb to success on the ladder of success that they forget about what's really important is the bottom floor. Well, hey everyone. <laughs> As if I didn't know you were there. I am really loving history. I always have loved history. Uh, I never would have admitted it when I was in school. Uh, I hated taking tests, but I loved studying it. I love it even more now. I love being a part of history, and I've been blessed to live in some places in my life that I've been a part of that. It feels so cool. So this week, when we're talking about the bottom floor, I got a chance to dig a little bit into history. So if you listen to the podcast, read the blog, you'll be able to see some of that information in there. I talked about uh, basically back at the turn of the century when we were really into some massive building, and we started building these things called the skyscrapers. And the first skyscraper, and there's some argument between Chicago and New York, and I think one overseas, maybe in England or London, that uh, was one of the first skyscrapers. But nevertheless, this one in Chicago, which was an insurance building 10 stories high. And of course today, that doesn't seem like it's a very big thing at all, 10 stories high. And I said uh, earlier this week, well, get on top of a 10-story building and lean off the side of it and tell me how tall you think it is then. It's tall enough. It's pretty big, right? So uh, I was able to find out some things uh, through the uh, way that they build the skyscrapers back then. And it was some amazing feats of technology, architecture, all the things they put together to make something that would work uh, and not fall over. But we have been building mankind tall structures from way before New York and Chicago. You've got things back at the Tower of Babel. You can go to Egypt and still see pyramids today. Amazing structures, right? So one of the biggest things that uh, the Lord really struck my heart with last week was you are never going to fully enjoy the penthouse view unless you fully embrace what it's like to be on the bottom floor. The bottom floor is really what makes the penthouse possible. So we really dug into some of that stuff this week, and I'd encourage you to, to dig in yourself to uh, the podcast and the uh, blog, which gives you a whole bunch of information. And I'll share a few of those things with you right now. Um, I gave you five, five points this week. Uh, humility. Uh, these are areas in the sense of what makes the ground floor the ground floor, the bottom floor. What are those, some of those places in our lives that are what really comprises what it takes to get to the top, the ladder of success, right? So a lot of people in business, and I've been a part of business as an entrepreneur for many years, and I have, in, I have been in a lot of uh, classes and webinars and seminars and things, especially a lot of late as I've been working to develop this ministry a bit further. And uh, a lot of times in the business world, marketing world, now social media, which is one of the biggest forms of marketing you know, in the world, people are concerned with, with making it big, making it loud, making it to the top, and what it takes to get there, and how to make all kinds of money and everything. And people definitely lose sight of some of the most important things. That would definitely be the ground floor. That's what it takes to start. And some people, uh, of course not you, not me, right? Uh, would never be humble enough to admit that they could stay grounded and start in the ground floor. But you know, it's one of the best places to be. Uh, a good leader 
is always someone who was an ex excellent follower, right? So I, I laid out a few things about what that ground floor looks like. Uh, I'll just recap in this week in our meaningful moments as we re recap the theme from the week. Uh, the first one is humility. Uh, I told a story about a couple from from uh, uh, what was it? Colombia, Medellin, Colombia, and their names were Maria and Miguel. And Maria and Miguel were drug addicts. Uh, while living in this community, and of course, this whole area is uh, completely poor. Only people that have money there are either um, doing things illegally or just well off. And then there's just bad. There's hardly much in the middle there. And they got involved in drugs. They found each other, and they got even worse into the drug scenario until they realized that they loved each other, and that love was a strong bond between the two of them that helped them to kick drugs out of their lives. And they are now drug-free. They've been married for 22 years. It's a fantastic story. What's even more fantastic about this story and incredible is their home. They have built a beautiful home together because their home is each other. Uh, they, they were homeless, as a lot of people in that area are, and they were looking for a place to call home. And they found it in the sewer. Yeah, that's why I said the sewer. They live in the sewer. They have lived there for the entire 22 years they've been together. Um, now, you'd think sewer meaning New York City, but this is kind of like a, a septic tank, a giant concrete septic tank, giant, large. They have a kitchen in there, a little bedroom area. They have electricity and a television in there. Crazy. What does it take to have a relationship like that? Humility. That's one of the top things about understanding how to be successful in life. That ground floor place in your life, the bottom floor, humility is one of the first places we talked about this week. Uh, the second one is to be grounded. And uh, I talked about a story of someone I came across this week in my readings. Uh, her name is Amina, and she is uh, now in Kenya. She lived in the Middle East for about 30 years on a visa and had a job and friends and was doing fantastic, so much so that her, her boss really, really loved her and what she was doing. And although her visa was coming up to expire, he tried twice to get it to be renewed and couldn't get it to happen. And Amina had to go, was forced back to Kenya after 30 years of working, <clears throat> excuse me, in another place, friends, lifestyle, uh, the whole nine yards, everything changed. And you can do a couple of things. One, you can go nuts that it happened. Uh, you can get depressed. You can be angry, bitter, all kinds of things. What was powerful about this person, Amina, is uh, she said a few things. Um, you're a person who practices a deep sense of mindfulness and don't really live uh, life around what ifs. So Amina, like I said, had been there, and she wrote a blog recently called How I Keep Myself Grounded After Life's Hardships. Understand that some things are and some things are not. So she had read something that another person had wrote. It was Lewis K.C. was a person who said that, quote, some things are and some things are not. So she came to conclusion, conclusion that the job and the visa were the things in her life that are not. And that was it. What more could you do? She said, am I going to consume myself with all the what-ifs of life? I can't. It's a not. So I have to move into the what do I have. I have 30 years of, of incredible opportunities with relationships with people I never would have met before, uh, job experience I never would have had, opportunities in my life now. She said she had a Kindle full of books she writes and reads, and now she has all kinds of resources available to her that she never would have had before and is very thankful for it. So it's all a matter of perspective, and that is a person who's grounded, and uh, she really is. Next one would be supported. I talked about how it means to be supported, and one of the one of the greatest examples of that uh, came from John F. Kennedy, our 35th president. And uh, the definition says support actually means to bear a part or all of the weight. That's what supported means. And I found that this statement he made embodies what that says. Let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill that we shall pay any price 
bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Powerful statement. That is all about being supported. That is about bearing a part or all of the weight. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm moving fast because you had a chance to recap through this, going back and look at some of the material. Uh, number four was trusted. Uh, this can be one of those tough places. Uh, you've got a couple of options there. Uh, one, it means it's just hard to trust. Sometimes it's just some people, well, all of us, but some more than others, it's very difficult to even consider how you can trust somebody. Um, the second would be to qualify as a person of trust. Uh, means that you have to be a person who can trust. Uh, so it, it takes a bit to do that. And when you find that you are in a situation where you feel like you can't trust people, and maybe you have to work with somebody or be married to somebody or who knows, whatever, then you say you can't trust. But it takes an element of trust to take the time to learn to trust somebody because we've heard the statement that says that trust isn't something you just get given to you it's something you have to earn and it's hard to do that but it takes trust to trust right so it's pretty powerful so trusted is another one of those bottom floor areas um, number five was firm I said it was a four-letter word right and a four-letter F word that we have this week and that's one of the last points of what it means to be a person uh, a ground floor bottom floor kind of a person Firm means having a solid, almost unyielding surface or structure. And then we dove into the Word of God, and this is where Jesus said in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. living. They're foundational words, words built to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you're like a smart carpenter who built his house on a solid rock. Rain poured down, the river flooded, tornado hit, but nothing moved the house. It was fixed to the rock. But if you just use my words in Bible studies and stuff and don't really work them into your life, I threw the end stuff in there, <laughs> then you're like a stupid, yeah, what it says, stupid carpenter who built his house on the sandy beach when a storm rolled in and the waves came up, it collapsed like a house of cards. So what better scripture can we look at than what that means to be firm? Uh, Jesus, our bedrock. So uh, when I talked about the skyscrapers today, I talked about, like, uh, for example, the, um, the World Trade Center. Uh, the pair of them, the first ones, when they were first built, they dug down 65 feet into the ground, 65 feet. They had problems with water coming in because of the water table. They had to figure out a way to do something around there. And they had a perimeter they built with concrete and they used uh, clay and mud and did all kinds of stuff to get this thing to dig down 65 feet to what was down there, the bedrock, the solid foundation, the stuff that wasn't moved, what was strong, unyielding, this thing down near the bedrock that everything else was able to build upon so that you get to the bottom floor, this big, huge place that's thick walls, some places are six feet thick, giant floors, uh, but you go into some beautiful skyscrapers and it's not like you walk into some, you know, eight foot ceiling. We're talking a couple of floors tall. It's just massive stuff and you can find shops and uh, beautiful ornate things inside of uh, big skyscrapers like this. You get the picture. So the bottom floor is not some some cheap little dingy thing. It, it is some beautifully ornate, strong thing built upon all these things I was telling you about today, these five places that I felt the Lord laid on my heart for what it takes to be a bottom floor kind of a person. Uh, so uh, the benefit is understanding the value of being bottom floor. You'll never see, never get, never to appreciate a penthouse without the bottom floor. I'm hoping that if you get a chance to dig through, uh, maybe I've enticed you enough to go back and read what I wrote this week or catch the podcast. The podcast comes out every Tuesday. You can go to godsgotthis.love. Uh, our website, and there's a link there, or you can go straight to the podcast. You can download the app from Podbean, Podbean, P-O-D-B-E-A-N, Podbean.com. Download the app, and then you could uh, subscribe to mine, and that would be Hope Revealed, hashtag God's Got This, Matt Crump. You can look for all of it, and you'll find me. 
uh, you'll be able to listen to our podcasts, which are released every Tuesday. So uh, I'd love for you to be able to t- tune into that one, and that was this week's called The Bottom Floor. Wednesday, we have our God's Got This stories, so that's Hope Revealed, Revealing Hope. Uh, God's Got This stories on Wednesdays is people's stories that are inspirational and heart-touching for, for us to be able to realize that in the midst of moments when we don't think we can handle things, um, a lot of times we can't, we find out God can, and these are from people that show you how that's possible. Thursday's the blog, like I told you, and I used to do all kinds of various things about the blog, but now I've, I've zeroed in that on uh, every week we'll have a theme, so the blog will always be relative to the theme of the week. More than likely would be pretty much the manuscript of what I said on the podcast on a Tuesday. And then on Friday, we have Meaningful Moments, which is what we're doing now. Kind of a recap, just a uh, a time between you and me where we get to chill out a little bit and just recap what uh, the message has been throughout the week. And I surely hope that it has been a blessing to you. And if you would like to find out what these themes are, what we're doing throughout every week, then there is a, a little newsletter slash magazine I put out, not some publication we mail to you, but you can subscribe to it and we'll email you the PDF every Monday. Just a couple of pages you'll be able to browse through and it tells you the highlights of what we're going to do throughout the week. A couple of themes, a couple of moments to share with you. Uh, Nothing that's long reading, but just things on Monday to remind you of what's coming. And again, you can do that by going to guysgotthis.love and subscribe. There's a newsletter link on there. Uh, If you've never been to the site before, the first time you go, you'll get a pop-up within a few seconds inviting you. And I'm very excited to, to uh, con- I've promoted it before, but we're, I'm pretty confident we've got most of the bugs worked out. I've been working for a few months on our app, and uh, the app is available to you if you'd like to go get it. It's absolutely free to you, and I have a lot of resources in there, and I'm getting ready to put a few more in, so bear with me as it continues to grow, but the app will grow uh, while you have it. You don't have to re-upload anything after you do it, so you can go to uh, My Church Apps, or go to the uh, app Store first. So if you're an Apple user, then you go to the App Store. Or if you are a uh, an Android user, go to Google Google Play, and you'll download My Church Apps. Very simple. Download the app. When it comes up, they'll give you a chance to pop in the name of what you're looking for, the ministry or podcast person or whatever you're looking for, the app person. And in that case, you would just simply type in hashtag God's Got This. Simple. Download My Church Apps. Pop in, hashtag God's got this, you got the app. Everything's on there. So you have a Bible, there's a journal in there, uh, the videos in there, podcast resources are in there from the ministry. Um, the journal is going to be excellent. You're going to love that. We're almost done getting it tweaked, but there's a lot of information in there because we're getting ready to uh, release some really cool information about a new journal that's uh, starting in the book that's coming out shortly. I just finished adding it to the book. Um, super stoked about it. And then we'll have a standalone journal as well. So uh, I can't wait to share that with you. It's all about God's got this moments. And uh, that's a whole other time. We'll talk that on another day. Uh, So until then, I just want to say thank you for your time today. I hope you've had a great week. I've been up and down, honestly. There's been several times I've been in bed, rough nights, can't sleep anymore for some reason. I have no idea what's going on. Lord promises us good sleep. I believe it. I just haven't gotten it yet. So I'm like, what's up, Lord? I want to get some sleep. So for those of you that are struggling with sleep or tired or um, exhausted or you've got problems in your life financially or mentally, physically, whatever, I can totally relate. And I can tell you that somehow, some way, God's going to get you through it. And I want to encourage you to continue to look to Him. He's the author and finisher of our faith. I love writing now. I am now considered an author. Um, Soon you'll have my book. I've got some super exciting news I'm going to share with you soon. Can't say anything now except I'm so stoked. So please pray that um, from what I've been seeing so far and some folks I've been talking to, that things are getting ready to work in in an interesting way that I had not expected. Isn't that how God works? So can't wait to share that with you soon. Fun stuff. All right, y'all. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Be good. Trust God. And know he has got everything in control, right? Because no matter what, you have to realize that, yeah, this world's out of whack. It's crazy. Things just may not work the way you think they're supposed to in your life. 
somehow, some way, God says in his word that he'll work together for all those things to work for your good. For those of us that are called according to his purpose, that's fantastic news. So he loves you so much. At the end of the day, what he would really tell you is, I've got this. So we trust in him. Share the message this week. Let people know God's got this. 